Hi, welcome to Angry Little Plant. I am going to give you information, and in return, you are not going to judge my mug. I am. I, I need something warm to drink. So, the what of this video is there in the caption. I am not going to elaborate a lot on that. Uh, but let's start with the why of this video. About a year ago, I was frantically looking for courses on the internet that would give me an in into data privacy and TMT law. Now the problem there is that there is not a lot of information on the internet. Everybody wants you to give them their money, so all courses have a very wide jurisdiction. From a student to a retired person can do this course, and they're technically right, but that doesn't mean they all should do the course. So the whole idea is to provide a little bit of perspective, a little bit of knowledge on who is this with this particular course for. So this video will be in three segments. One will be your holistic courses like the DSCI. The second would be solutions training, which I think is very important because it is extremely confusing. And the third would be your accreditations such as the CIPP. Starting with the DSCI DCPP. I have an entire video on that. So you don't I'm not going to repeat anything that I said there here. The basic idea is if you've decided you want to work in TMT and specifically data privacy law, whether that be in a law firm or otherwise, this is a good starter. <clears throat> so after I did this course, I was it was easier for me to get TMT internships. I was able to do a uh, spice route, I was able to do BTG Advaya, I was able to do uh, Ikigai. So this course will give you a basic holistic idea of data privacy in general. A lot of people are under the misconception that this is only for Indian laws, which is not true. In fact, when I did the course, it fell short on updating its Indian data privacy part of the course, which was sad, but never mind. Now let's talk about the private parts of this these kind of courses which would be cdpo by zetroid another course that i did later on uh, there are similar courses on the market i just didn't explore that part but these courses are not only they are not for people who just realize they want to do data privacy you did you realized you want to get into data privacy and now you know that you want to get into data privacy consultancy now uh, data privacy lawyer in a law firm will not necessarily do the same things that a consultant does and this particular course is more useful for a consultant if you happen to be on any groups that are for cyber security professionals data privacy professionals dpos and above you know uh, which i happen to accidentally stumble upon a lot of them ask for these templates you know your ropa dpia templates some checklist so this particular course gave me a fair library of such checklists and these checklists can later on be used to you know train yourself on how to assess a company's data privacy posture now uh, segueing into solutions which i said are very confusing most of the solutions cater to make these templates easier so uh, let's just say cookie consent management, right? Usually you would have a manual thing that would help you keep track of cookie consent. But with big organizations and big data, you can't really do that. You need automated systems that keep track of those things. So that's what a solution does. I will make videos on separate solutions because I have gotten training right now in security AI earlier in OneTrust, but uh, I did these trainings earlier when I was a little bit misguided, I did not know what was the use for me for them, right? To answer that question, uh, solutions are for people who are working in data privacy and working usually with other companies. So a consultant would basically let you know that, hey, your team is still a beginner into data privacy. Maybe this particular solution would be good for them because it's very user friendly. Or maybe this particular one would be really good for you because you are already experts in the field and you need something more nuanced, more complex, use this. Or if you are already working with an organization with which uses a particular solution, you might want to learn that to keep track of things. 
it is not for someone who is just starting out and although on linkedin you will see a lot of job descriptions that prefer candidates who have such training if a company really needs you to be able to use a particular solution they will probably give you training on that so that is something that i would say initially if you want you can do their free courses so that you get familiar with the dashboard i did that with one trust security ai and i think one more uh, solution that i can't recall uh, most of them most of my certifications are there on my linkedin except a few that i feel like are not required yet they are these trainings are simply trainings on how to use our dashboard and the things we can do for you they are not necessarily trainings that everyone requires in the field so if you can if you have been thinking about whether i should spend money on the security advanced uh, security advanced course or big idea advanced course you probably don't need it and if at some point you do you would be explicitly told to get it done uh moving away from solutions let's come to accreditations there is a lot of information on this on the internet so i don't think i need to elaborate a lot this is for people who are now seriously into the field and really need to prove their expertise to enter into the market analysts don't tend to need a cipp i know a lot of consultants who don't have a cipp because the market for people who have been in the field for veterans in the field for companies that specialize in data privacy the market has starting started to realize that people just get the certification without having the knowledge of what to do and that reflects in interviews and sometimes reflects in work so i wouldn't say just getting a cipp is enough or even that it is completely mandatory i would say that a lot of jobs in the market are right now networking based because either you're dealing with someone who is in this field for a long time and they want more than the certification they want to ask you questions on how would you handle x y z situations and have that problem solving ability or you are dealing with hrs who don't know anything about the field because they've not been informed so in that case they are just looking for the certification but sometimes the certification does not correlate with the job that you're going to do so that is something that you have to be very very careful about especially when you are trying to invest in something that expensive the cipp costs around 50k i know very few people who gave this who like did this course without taking any additional training or any additional mocks you know or any additional study material i whenever i do prepare for this whenever i do start working on it which should be soon enough i will post my progress i say this in every video because after every video i tend to get messages on linkedin or in my comments about what materials do i have can i share a few of them uh when i do start and i have been collecting material i will let you all know so i'll try to give a rundown of everything i have said so far first dsci dcpp is for students if you are in your third fourth fifth year and you've decided that tmt law is something you want to work in and specifically data privacy law uh the dsci dcpp would really really help if you have moved one step ahead and you want to get into consultancy that's when you decide that maybe this course is a little too easy for me that's when you move on to more nuanced courses such as the cdpo course or any dpo course uh please know that these courses in theory will explain what, what what to do but the more you step into the market the more you will realize that automation is changing everything and that's when your solutions come into the picture solutions training i would not recommend it unless you are directly working with clients or working in an organization that uses them and i definitely don't recommend paying a lot for it because most organizations unless you are not in an organization and you are applying for job uh, will give you that training so that's step 3 solutions in my opinion and accreditations are like a degree so when i do have my law degree people will be will people people will trust me with the law there might be people who might know a lot more than i do because they just 
are in the field a lot more maybe they worked in the law chamber simply because of enthusiasm or maybe they watched the news more so there are, can be a lot of people who know more than the law than i do but i do have the degree so people will trust me more so that's how an accreditation works so that is something i think you can take your own sweet time with decide when it is right for you to get it De- decide who would want to fund it for you or would you want to fund it yourself and then you can move ahead with it with this i hope this video helped you and i hope you have a nice day i try to answer all the questions that i can both on linkedin and youtube i will try to be more active on both of these social medias and yeah i am looking forward to all of the questions and the comments that you have for this